In CK3, duchies are one of the most important, but least talked about aspects of the game. A good duchy can lead to an amazing game, while a bad one can lead to stagnation and an eventual game over. In this video, I go into detail on 5 underrated duchies in Crusader Kings 3. Note, this list is based on a variety of factors, including position, terrain, the amount of counties in the duchy, special buildings, etc. Alright, let's start. At number 5, we have Genoa. So Genoa has two counties, which is why I put it on number 5, because two counties are not a lot, and it doesn't give you much to work with, but there's a lot of power hidden in these two counties here. Talking about position, Genoa probably has one of the best positions in the entire game, just based on places you can actually conquer in, and the value of the actual land that you could take. You can make your way down to Corsica, Sardinia, and then eventually go into North Africa, which is a super easy way to expand, or you can even push into France eventually, which should be decently easy because France always falls apart. There's also Iberia, which is fragmented, and the rest of Italy, of course. There also is a bit of LARP potential with Genoa, because Genoa was extremely strong compared to its size in the medieval age. They owned Corsica, bits of the Aegean Islands, and plus a little bit more, so it definitely is a decent LARP campaign. Looking at the two duchies themselves, Genoa itself has a special building, Walls of Genoa, which gives you plus 3 tax a month, plus 2 fort level, plus 25% garrison size, and danger minus 20. It also gives plus 50% raid time, plus 5% defender advantage, plus 10 dev growth, and plus 3 dev growth a month, which is pretty good. It also starts off built in 867, so you can take advantage of these buffs immediately starting out. I won't lie though, there are downsides to Genoa, one of which is a lack of actual baronies that you can actually hold on to. Genoa has 5 barony holdings that you can hold on to in total, which is not great. You can't just play tall with 5 barony holdings. You can, but it'll be extremely difficult, and you'll probably be outpaced by everyone else around you. And also depending on your luck, starting out Genoa could be pretty difficult, because your troop count isn't going to be the highest by any means. But it definitely isn't a bad start by any means. At number 4 we have Transylvania. I can't sing my praises enough about this duchy. This duchy is one of my favorites to start out with. Its position is amazing. On your east, you're protected by the Carpathian Mountains, and there's a ton of chokeholds in between the mountains, which makes it extremely easy to actually defend your eastern border. There's also mountains to your south and to your west, which aren't nearly as protective as the ones to the east, but they still help out a ton. The duchy also has 7 counties in it, which is a ton. And that's not even including all the baronies, which in total equals 29 whole counties. Which is insane. You're probably not going to be able to hold on to every single one of these counties, so you can just get rid of the really bad terrain provinces and keep the good ones. In the capital of the duchy, you even start off with farmland, so it's extremely easy to get tall using this duchy. And to make it even better, there's two mines in this duchy. All these things put together make it extremely easy to just roll and make a ton of money easily. On the downsides, I'd say a pretty decent downside is that in 867, the provinces start out with no development at all. Every province here has two development, which is horrible. These provinces also start off all tribal, so you're going to have to spend money on converting all these provinces from being feudal to being tribal. Other than that though, it's an extremely fun start, lots of conquering opportunities, it's just super fun playing in this duchy. At number 3 we have Lower Lorraine, which for some reason is oddly named. Upper Lorraine is below Lower Lorraine. If anybody knows why that is, please tell me. I've always been curious about this, I don't really get why it's that way. But anyways, Lower Lorraine is split in two by the Rhine River, which could be bad if there's people sieging on one half and you have to cross a bridge to get to the other half. But honestly, compared to all the buffs you get, it's kind of a nitpick. There are honestly endless opportunities with this duchy. The capital county has all good terrain. There's three farmland provinces and there's one plain province, which is definitely good. There's also good terrain in basically every single other one of the counties. All plains and farms in a forest. Forests aren't even that bad. Minus 10% supply limit and plus 45 danger. So there's no development debuffs that you have to worry about. In total, there are 19 baronies in the whole duchy. 
which is more than enough to play tall. The best thing about the duchy is just the main county. The Cologne Cathedral is one of the best things in the game, especially considering the position of it. It's just amazing to play, and you basically have infinite money the entire game. The position of the duchy is also great. There's a farmlands to the north of you, and there's also Aachen to the west of you, which is an amazing county by its own. Overall, it's just a super fun game to play in Lower Lorraine and just dominate everyone around you. And number two, we have Warringal, which is a duchy I haven't heard of before this video, so I doubt that you have heard of it either. It starts off in southern-ish India, over here by the mountains. There's five counties in the duchy, and in total, there's 17 baronies that you can hold on to. And I will admit, there are some bad sides to this duchy. In a few provinces, the terrain's jungle, which is pretty bad, minus 25% supply limit, minus 40% dev growth, and plus 65 danger. It's definitely not the best terrain, but it definitely makes up for it in mines. There's two mines here, one of which is already built in 867, which obviously is a great thing to have. There's also mountains to the north of you, which gives you a pretty nice safety net. If you want to be safe in your position and in your money, this duchy is definitely worth a try. And last up on the list, we have Fergana. I can't sing my praises enough about this duchy. I think that this is the biggest hidden gem in the entire game, honestly. I played here once and it was amazing. Just the positioning, the counties, the amount of baronies, it's just a great province. There's five counties in this duchy, but there's 26 baronies in total. The capital county also has a farmlands province in it, which is pretty good, obviously. One of the best things about it though, is just the positioning. You have mountains to the north of you, which basically blocks off every possible invader that you could have. It's probably one of the best places to actually fight off the Mongols. It's going to be impossible for the Mongols to get through this mountain if you're really prepared for them. There's also mountains to the east of you and to the south of you, so you're basically protected from all invaders on every front. The only thing you have to worry about is your west, but even then, if you're able to take two duchies, you have a huge desert to the west of you that can easily protect your west. There are no special buildings in this duchy, but honestly, I think the buffs that it already has outweigh any need for any special buildings. So yeah, that's my top 5 list. If you guys have any other duchies that you think I missed, just tell me. If you think my list is wrong, just tell me. And yeah, thank you for watching.